I'm Matt, and this is my garage. So this is the second part of a series on uh, rebuilding a Lotus Esprit motor. And last time we did the block, and we put the pistons in. Um, not very exciting stuff, but uh, you know, you gotta, you gotta start somewhere. So got that done, and this week is kinda cool. So we're going to be putting the head on. Uh, which is exciting to see that come together and then we're gonna get a little crazy with it and put the cam carriers on and go through the wonderful wonderful task of setting the the valve clearances for that with the different shims so talk my way uh, or, or, or talk you through it the best I could and hopefully it makes some sense I'm not sure but we'll we'll see we'll see <laughs> hey um you know one thing I want to mention, uh, a lot of people ask me, well, how did you get into Lotus? And it, it's kind of interesting. I, I should say, right now I have three Lotus Esprits. I have a 1979, I have uh, in two 1988s, which came off the line within 20 cars of each other, which I think is kind of cool. Um, but, you know, in the beginning, I didn't go looking for Lotus. It sort of found me. I had a uh, I had a Jaguar XK8, and I was getting it worked on at a shop up the road, and they knew I was into cars, and, and I had a lot of cars, and so they had these cars in the back room, and uh, they took me back there, and I saw the I saw the black Lotus Esprit, the '79, and I'm like, man, I gotta have that car. Well, uh, it turns out that the guy that owned the car also owned like 11 more cars back there. And I, so I called him up, we got to talking, and he, he actually had a Lotus Esprit and a Lotus Eclat. And, you know, the, the Eclat was kind of cool, um, not my favorite, but so I said, hey, why don't you sell me these two cars? And he called me back the next day and he said, well, you know, um, I'm moving to Panama and I really want to unload all of those cars. And he had 12 cars back there. Uh, so... We negotiated a deal, and uh, it was a really good deal for me. So I went ahead and I bought all 12 of those cars from him. And let's see, of course, none of them ran. So, so it's not like I flipped a large bill for these. Don't don't get the wrong impression. But it, in that lot of cars, I got I got the Lotus Esprit. I got the uh, like a it was a 75 Lotus Eclat. I think that's right. Two Jensen Heelys. Um, a TVR, 70, 74 TVR, I think it was, um, two Jaguar XKSs, gigantic cars, weighed a ton. I actually, the 12 cylinders, I actually pulled one of the 12 cylinders out on the floor in the garage over there, uh, laying on my back underneath the cars. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, let's see, what else was in that collection? Um... My gosh, it's been so long. Uh, there was a Jensen Interceptor. I got that. Uh, very rough, rough condition. A lot of rust on it. Man, there were some others, but you know, it's been so long, I don't remember. Anyway, yeah, so so I kind of um, kind of got into Lotus that way. And uh, I first tore apart the, the Lotus Eclat. And I just, I don't know, you know, I, I gained an appreciation for that car and the way it was put together. Um, I, I guess it was a combination, the simplicity of it, but yet, um, I don't know. It was, uh, it was different from all the American stuff I've been working on. So I kind of enjoyed the change. And then I started getting into the, the, um, the 79 Lotus Esprit. Actually, I didn't do anything with that. I, I just kept it in the back room. I kind of was saving it for a project for, for a later date. Um, but in the meantime, I bought a 1988 Lotus Esprit and decided I would get my hands dirty on that one first and tore that thing apart, every nut and bolt, and rebuilt it and learned learned so much. And I think that's where I really got the appreciation for the Lotus Esprit and, and how, you know, people call them, call them kit cars in the beginning and, I, you know, I, I don't really buy in, uh, I could see that, but, I mean, once you tear the car apart and you see how well the mechanics were, were engineered. Um, I mean, for you, it's a four-cylinder. You know, that, that's, kind of, yeah, everybody says the same thing. Like, it should have been an eight-cylinder. I totally agree. Um, but anyway, 
they used every inch of space in those cars. Like nothing was left. Uh, there was no available real, real estate left anywhere in that car, it seems. Um, so putting them together is, you know, if you enjoy jigsaw puzzles, then buy a Lotus Esprit, tear it apart, and try to rebuild it. Because uh, a lot of it's like putting together a jigsaw puzzle, sometimes without a picture. <laughs> uh, anyway, enough of that. Um, hey, let's get on with uh, putting the head on the motor and looking at the cam carriers. All right. Hey, so here's a head. I, when I got it back from the machine shop, uh, point, pointing at the uh, blanking plugs there, putting those back in. But uh, while it was in there, I had the exhaust uh, ported and not polished, but we went through a series of, of grits getting finer and finer and finer. So we got some really good flow coming through there. Um, installed some, all the valves are new. The exhaust and the intake valves are all new. Uh, they're all sitting on new uh, valve seats and the, the stems were all measured and, and cut correctly. Um, what else can I, oh, I went with the uh, Sport 300 valves. So I'm hoping to get a little extra performance out of those bad boys. I'm not sure how much gain I'll get. Um, I can get, you know, uh, if I'm getting more more air in for sure, but can I get more of uh, more gas flow in there? I, I don't know with the Bosch ignition system, but I'll give it a shot. All right, time has come to put the head back on the motor. Yes. Start with the gasket. These are uh, ARP head studs I put in. They're torqued uh, 30 foot pounds in, in the block. And then uh, once you put the head on, the nuts are actually torqued to 110 foot pounds. So when you do that, just a heads up, make sure you use the proper ARP uh, assembly lubricant. The viscosity of, of the lubricant is what's going to allow you to get to the 110 foot pounds or ensure that when you hit 110 foot pounds that it's the right torque for, for the head. All right, these are the new gaskets, thicker than the original Lotus gaskets. Um, I didn't want to lose compression with the added thickness. So I had them take the, uh, the deck down on the block. I think it was five thou. Um, so yeah, they took the, uh, the deck down five thou to account for the thicker gasket. But then you also got to take the uh, cylinder sleeves out and you've got to mill down inside the block, the base of the cylinder sleeves. So I milled those five thou as well. So they're sitting in the same place in the block. Put the head on. I've done my best to keep this engine as clean as I can, but inevitably, you know, I see a speck of dust here or, or something there, and it's really disappointing. I've had the head bagged the whole time I've had it. Even the cam carriers and the cams, you know, I wrap them, uh, I bag them just to keep any dust or anything else I could get in there from getting in, but a little bit of dust just stuck to uh, some of the assembly loop they used to put the, um, the collets on the top of the valve stems. I think I'm going to try to get that out. Alright, I'm going to lube these up and uh, start putting them on. I should be using these plastic gloves. It just helps keep junk out of the motor. I typically do. Every now and then I forget. So 
I catch myself trying to do something, I realize I don't have the gloves on, so I stop. Put them on, I'm set. You know, my understanding is that ARP also use different um, lubricants throughout the years. Some are more viscous than others. If you're going to use a, an assembly lube that didn't come with the actual kit, you might want to think about just using the one that came with the kit to make sure that you're, you're uh, going to get the right torque specs for that particular kit and that particular lubricant. Because the torque specs will change based on the different lubricants. <laughs> start torquing them down now just note that uh, go to the service manual for the actual um, order of torquing and then it goes from the inside out when you're torquing them down but I'm gonna go look in the service manual and make sure I uh, do it correctly Well, I'm not sure how much I trust this torque wrench. I have had it for quite a while. The reason I'm suspect is I got to 100, and then I went to 110, and it didn't advance him any farther. So I think I might have to, unfortunately, invest in a new torque wrench. Blah. You know, I had to go out and get a torque wrench. So I, I did that and, you know, I went out to um, Home Deep, no, went to Lowe's, bought a Craftsman torque wrench. And uh, since I was trying to get to 110, torque wrenches come in um, different torque ranges. So you can get one that's like, I don't know, say it's like from 25 up to 100 and, or, you know, 75 to 250. Um, so the wrench I had before, even though it showed uh, on the scale going up to like 200 foot-pounds it was only rated to a hundred so anyway yeah got a new torque wrench let me uh, let me show you what all I got. right let's look at that torque wrench hey cam <laughs> want to pull that sucker out Yeah. how heavy is this thing pretty heavy huh you could play baseball with that <laughs> I could <laughs> uh, but I wouldn't Guarantee it because last a few bats ago I broke my entire bat. It, the dent went down to here. It's because you hit the ball so hard, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So here's the torque wrench. Got a Craftsman. Um, uh, this thing goes up to uh, well, it shows going up to 240 on the scale. I forget what this thing's rated to. Yeah, actually, it goes it goes all the way up to that. So. Um, wasn't cheap, you know, it's not, not a $40 torque wrench, but needed it to get the job done. So another tool in the toolbox. I kind of always happy when I get a new tool, right? And uh, think, oh yeah, I'm going to use this again. Definitely going to use this again. So I got a new tool. I'm psyched. And I got the head on the motor. Yeah. So there it is. Um, I, I thought I was going to get into the cam timing, the cam housings on and, and shimming it and all that in this episode, but man, the time just goes by so fast. So I don't really have time in this video. I think 
Uh, you know, I, I don't want to <laughs> bore everybody to death with, with a 40-minute video. <laughs> so I'm going to cut this one a little short. All right. That's it for now. See ya.